You may have noticed that I was a little bit stressed earlier, or maybe you didn't notice because I was stressed all day. But, you know, Jim said a lot of interesting things, but he slipped through that, oh, it didn't look like a speaker was coming. And I don't know if you saw that that immediately led to me running out. Sometimes, however, reality has a, a way of uh, fixing things. And lucky for me, the speaker is indeed here. My information was better than, than it would appear. Uh, but the reason I actually believed that this rumor could be true is that on the 25th of August, this speaker rang a very important bell, and it was not the bell that was used to get you into this room. It's a bell that I must admit uh, is a very cool bell to ring. So um, I want to bring uh, to your attention J.C. Gutierrez, who is, um, you know, he's an executive and has a long experience in co the corporate world, but he is here because he is commercializing synthetic biology with Synlogic, and he just took that company to NASDAQ. And the uh, stage is yours. Tell us about the experience that tells where synthetic biology as a market is moving and shaking based on your experience. JC. Thank you. Thank you, Trump. Thank you, everybody, for inviting us and tell it, uh, allowing us to tell you about the Synlogic story. So we are a company, a synthetic biology company that uh, Jim Collins started with Tim Liu. Uh, approximately three years ago, and we are fully committed to therapeutic development. I think that's where probably sets us apart from others. We, are, we believe that actually engineering cells, in this case prokaryotic cells, bacteria, could really change our lives and could bring another type of therapeutic platform for us as patients, and that's what we do. Um, we develop we engineer probiotics, the same probiotics that you buy in the health food store. Tens of thousands of people take it every day, millions take it chronically. We take them because they're natural and safe and some sort of gut health, but we don't know if they do anything, probably they don't do much. We engineer them to perform a human somatic metabolic conversion. So if your liver, your kidney, your pancreas cannot do certain metabolic function, the idea is that you take this probiotic, this, we, this engineered probiotic that we call synthetic biotic, every day, like a probiotic. We don't rely on colonization first. We know how to make them colonize, but it's not our goal. You take it every day, and the time that is in your body is performing that metabolic conversion with potency. And that's where synthetic biology was instrumental to us, to build control, to build potency of that metabolic conversion. We, it's not that we express an enzyme or two enzymes or 100 enzymes. We, we express a whole pathway with regulatory elements that make that biotic to be able to sense and respond. Okay? So uh, again, we are a public company, so I have to say that. <laughs> two weeks. I don't even know what to say with this slide. So OK, well, you know. Um, but we, call, we believe that this is truly a new class of medicines. We call synthetic biotic synthetics because they are semi-synthetic. Semi they are not full synth fully synthetic bacteria. We like the space of probiotics. We do. There is some, some sort of human-derived probiotics that have a sense of uh, being natural. Somebody else has been, has been able to manufacture them. Uh, millions of people taking, so there is non-regulated safety. And we like the fact that we just build that potency, we measure the potency, we do pharmacology with probiotics. We have scanned, there are approximately 350 or so probiotic, probiotics that are being used in the world. Of those, around 100 are derived from the human microbiome. We like six of them because they have different biologies, they are engineerable. We have worked mainly with one, E. coli nisto, derived from the human microbiome, commercialized in Canada. Uh, uh, you should turn that w clock on or off or whatever, just to make sure that uh, I don't keep talking for four hours. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, or somebody should measure me, otherwise I don't stop. So, so and, and you know, it's commercialized as a probiotic in, in Canada, Australia, Europe, people take it. The combination of both, always the same chassis. We always use NISO, uh, and that's good. I mean, you know, for every program, we keep the same bacteria. Manufacturing is reproducible. Formulation is reproducible. Uh, transit is reproducible. Uh, all the pharmacological and pharmaceutical properties are somehow reproducible for manufacturing. And then we change the circuit, a circuit specifically for one disease, another circuit specifically for another disease. That's what we call synthetic biotics. Um, um, we 
have started in the simplest metabolic conversions, the, simple, the, the simplest diseases that we could come up with. Orphan, monogenic, metabolic diseases, inborn errors of metabolism. In, the, in this case, we know exactly what we have to program. Your liver is not able to catabolize a certain metabolite, or is not able to anabolize a certain metabolite, and that makes you sick. And that is happening in the periphery. If that metabolite that has to be catabolized or anabolized actually fluxes from the gut into the blood, we go in after that. And we build a unique catabolic or anabolic pathway. At, at the times, it's not the same pathway. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples. But we need a pathway with potency that compensates you metabolically. However, we believe, and this is from the business perspective, something has been instrumental for us. We put the company in hyperdrive. Three years ago, as you will see, Jim started the company, and we decided to be a drug discovery and development company. And the simplest way to get to the clinic, measure, manufacture, and actually get a response or not, a clinical response or not, was really to focus on the simplest cases and diseases where we can afford 30 to $50 million in discovery and development per indication is something that a small company can do. And part of our value is back is, is or, or actually no, all our value at this point is ascribed to this, to this red box. However, we believe that from the gut, as you know, I, I was trained as an immunologist and I trained that the immune system was, was educated in the thymus or in the, the T cells and the B cells in the marrow. The immune system is educated in the gut. Our metabolic set point for bigger indications set up in the gut. So we think that from from the gut, with synthetic biotics, we can affect different types of diseases. So, however, these are much more expensive, and we want to do them in partnership with others. We did a first partnership with AVI for the development of, of uh, biotics for Crohn's and colitis. Two programs, um, one program in the clinic for subjects that cannot form urea. You know, 17% of the protein that we eat every day is nitrogen. And typically, we form urea, and we pee it out. If you have a genetic mutation in the urea cycle, or your liver is blown up because of virus or alcohol, and you don't produce well urea, then your ammonia accumulates, and you have a number of problems. Okay? What we have done is to build a biotic, not that forms urea, because it was not energetically, or uh, it was not too efficient. So we build a biotic that we refactor the, the arginine pathway in in uh, E. coli and iso. And we build a bacteria that is 1,000 times more potent than a regular bacteria in converting ammonia into urea, sorry, into arginine, and actually is almost 500, more 500 times more efficient than an hepatocyte. So think about, this, think about it this way. We have approximately three, 3 times 10 to the 11th liver cells. This is a liver. We give every day three times that dose as a probiotic capsule. So we can do, by mass, we can do metabolic complementation. The liver has around 500 metabolic functions. It's our goal to build 500 metabolic functions one by one in a bacteria. Any liver disease that you have will complement. I mean, of course, I'm being, I'm being aspirational, but this is our vision. Second program for phenylketonuria will enter the clinic in, at, the, at, the end, at, at the beginning of next year, another Orphan monogenic metabolic disease, 4% of the protein that you eat is phenylalanine. You have to degrade it, otherwise uh, you know, your, your tyrosine and neurotransmitter mix is, is messed up. We build a biotech that degrades phenylalanine. Um, you know, what we do in the company is to provide bacterial solutions to somatic problems. And this is because, as you know, we are sort of a symbiont between bacteria and eukaryotic cells. So we are, interestingly, I just want to drop this, we have an immune oncology program that actually takes the same approach. So immune oncology at the moment and the oncology field is trying to, to change cold tumors into hot tumors. And the whole world is doing it somatically. OK, we'll do it bacterially. You know, our tumors have bacteria, opportunistic infections in some cases. What we do is really to change that microenvironment somatically. So the company, and this is the company, Synthetic Biotics, you have to remember that word. That is the only thing that you have to remember. You don't have to remember my name, it's long. Uh, you have to remember Professor Jim Collins' name, of course, because he's, he's, he's onto something. Synthetic Biotics, just in case this is one drug that you or somebody in your family takes in the future. We believe that that's the case. The company was started around three years ago 
by Jim, Tim Liu, and seated by Atlas Venture across the road. New Enterprise Associates came later on, important fund for us, and the Gates Foundation. We were very proud of being partners with Gates. Later on, we brought Orbimed, Deerfield, and our investors participated. We were lucky enough that before we had done a single experiment in Crohn's and colitis, Avi saw the potential of the, of the platform. Um, the pro we announced two months ago that we reached the first milestone with them. So very, very proud of that relationship with them. And um, last year, we decided to, uh, that given where we are in the clinic, given that uh, we believe that, that this platform could be um, uh, transformational in terms of the therapeutics that we take, given the response from the market, we decided to, uh, to uh, do a reverse merger with a publicly listed company that brought $42.5 million. We raised another 42 in a private placement. So overall, it was like an 84.5 financing. And we went public. On public, uh, we started to be listed two weeks ago on Monday. And you know, from the business perspective, because I think there's a, there's a mixture of business and scientists here, very interesting from, you know, we, we, we took this because this allowed us to go public at a private value ahead of certain clinical milestones that are over the next 14 months that are important for us. So from the value creation perspective um, and from the dilution perspective, this was, I think, the right thing for us to do. It was also very efficient. The company, we are only 50 people, which is a lot, but it's little. And, you know, the whole team, 47 of the 50 are focusing on getting the drugs to the clinic, getting that first program, getting manufacturing. And three or four of us, we were just, in three months, we were able to uh, a very efficient reverse merger and, and, and an exit. So we're very, uh, we, uh, you know, every company has to find its path. For us, at this point, this was a very efficient way to raise money and to be public. And, and of course, everything will depend on data, but we are at a good value platform we are absolutely committed to therapeutics, and not to all types of therapeutics, but probiotic bacteria engineered to perform somatic conversions, metabolic conversions. That is our space. And if that space is fertile, you will have these drugs in some years in your medicine cabinet. Um, thank you so much. Um, I think that we're going to very quickly move on, unless there's a yep. super yep. quick question from, and Cheryl is here, I want to point out. Cheryl is uh, w one of the three officers, again, from the ILP. We are going to move on very quickly to the panel debate, where you can ask uh, many, many questions. If there is an immediate question for, for J uh, J.C. Gutierrez, uh, we will take it. Um, doesn't look like that. Fe thank you so much. Sure, my thank pleasure. You. Thank you. And uh, the next part of the program is a panel debate. We're going to start without any breaks, so don't get comfortable. Um, 